hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll just pretend like I'm Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Man, that's a good one. You know, it's probably not the most popular one, but uh, we took a cab and summer, for SummerSlam in LA a few years ago, and the driver went the wrong way down a one way, and all of a sudden in the back seat it was 1985 all over again. It was a promo from hell, and um, we were asked to leave the cab. I probably can't say any of the four letter words here, but you can use your imagination, and if Flair was allowed to cuss on TBS in 85, that's what happened in the cab, and it's my most classic Ric Flair story for sure. You know, I really like this question because I feel like there's lots of people who debate that that's wrong, you know, but it, I think everybody kind of has their own. So for who made me a fan, I mean, it's Hulk Hogan, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and of course, Ric Flair. But now that I'm, you know, a little older and I can appreciate the tapes of stuff that happened before I was a big fan, I think you got to put Dusty Rhodes on there. So I would probably have Dusty, Hogan, Flair, and... You know, the fourth one, I don't know how you could do it without putting Stone Cold on there. I mean, I think he's got to come back, and he's got to come back for a WrestleMania. I mean, that would be my guess anyway. And with WrestleMania being back in New Orleans and that being the most recent WrestleMania that he was a big part of, being one of the hosts, and I mean, I think it would be a, the right time. I understand the WWE's need to distance themselves corporately until he's done his apology tour or whatever, but... Realistically, I think that eventually the time has to come where he'll be back in the fold. I mean, I think it's got to be Vince McMahon. I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but you hear all these little weird things that Nick cares about and flips out on people and has, you know, these, these overreactions and a crazy work ethic. So much of that lines up with Vince McMahon. You know, I, I know that's given Nick a lot of credit because to a lot of wrestling fans, you know, Vince is like our Walt Disney. But no, I, I think that Nick Saban and, and Vince McMahon are pretty closely paralleled in that regard. You know, to me, it's still One Night Stand 2005, and I know people on social media get tired of me saying that, but it was something that you never thought you would get a chance to see again. And it feels like these days, pay-per-views just keep you going till the next pay-per-view. But with that one, you went in knowing this is it. This is the end. We never got the proper send-off, and the emotions were just so high, and they were so true to the original product, whether it was the building or the ring or the boys or the theme music. And when Sandman comes out to the original theme, not the network version, man, that's just the best moment in wrestling. What would my gimmick be? Well, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think online people like uh, Conrad the Alabama Dream. Uh, so I guess I would be doing some shucking and jiving or whatever that silly dance that Akeem was called. Uh, but maybe if you used my professional life, I don't know. I guess if IRS could be a, a character and the Repo Man could be a character, maybe I'd be the Mortgage Man. I don't know. What would a Mortgage Man's finisher be called? That's a great question, man. I, I don't know. Maybe it would be uh, the interest reducer or, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to have abbreviations for like submissions. So like, instead of like the STF, I'd have the APR. Oh, I mean, I think this is a pretty easy answer. To me, it's Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. Had we gotten Flair Hogan at WrestleMania five, and then maybe we would have gotten the Mega Powers exploding at WrestleMania six, and then the warrior at seven, I would have been all about that. I think that would have been the coolest thing ever to find a way to put Flair Hogan in a main event at WrestleMania in 89. That's hard to beat. I mean, I think it's gotta be Arn Anderson. As a kid, I was into face paint. I was into muscles. I was into theme music. You know, I wanted, who would make a cool action figure? Arn Anderson didn't make a cool action figure, but he made a hell of a pro wrestler. And I can see that now when I watch the old stuff and I see the little things he did that were just so great. And somebody asked me the question the other day, if there wasn't ever a Ric Flair, would we be talking about Arn Anderson as being one of the greatest of all time? And it's really hard to argue because you think about the guys who held the NWA world title before Rick, and it was guys like Dory Funk. Well, his look's not that different from Arn Anderson or Harley Race. I mean, everything that Harley Race was, to me, Arn Anderson was better.
a happy accident. You know, it was right time, right place, I guess. Uh, Ric Flair asked me to sit in and, and, and visit with him on his very first podcast just to ask fan questions. We were friendly and he knew that I had done a little bit of live radio just to promote my mortgage company and I was his buddy and knew about wrestling so I wouldn't put him in a bad spot. And that went well. He asked me to keep coming back. CBS was into it so we just kept it going. And then when that show came to an end, I said, Rick, I think we can do this on our own. We don't necessarily need a major player behind us. Podcasting's not all that complicated. And through there, somewhere in that timeline, I became introduced to Bruce Pritchard, and I realized, man, this is what a podcast should be. He has so many great stories that he felt like people didn't care about, or maybe the business had forgot him. So as he told me a story about the radicals one day in my living room, I turned to him and said, man, this is a podcast. Because I was not a big Radicals fan, and I know this sacrilege to a lot of wrestling fans, but it just wasn't my deal. But when he made me care about them for an hour, I thought, this is what people like I, a wrestling fan, want to hear. So I twisted his arm, and over the next two weeks, I convinced him to just tape a pilot with me. He had fun. We taped another pilot. He had fun, and I said, hey, we're ready to publish one. Let's go. So we picked Dusty Rhodes, went with it, and I really took it seriously. And now, all of a sudden, here we are. A Ric Flair robe. As a kid, I thought it would be the coolest thing ever to actually get one of those. And then sometime in late 2012, I'm scrolling through eBay and I saw one, a real one. And I just flipped out. I thought, this isn't a replica robe like we had seen mass produced. This is the real deal. So I negotiated with the guy and was able to pick it up. And as a kid, it would be the coolest thing ever just to have one. And, and now not only did I see one, I own one. It's pretty fun. Have you ever worn it? Well, that feels a little weird to say, but yes, of course. So you got to try it on once, but I'm not just, you know, wearing it to check the mail or anything. But yeah, of course, you want to feel the weight and it's kind of neat to see. Does Rick know you have it? Yes, absolutely. And that you've worn it? Uh, Rick not only knows I have it, Rick asked to borrow it for 30 for 30. So when you see the, uh, the footage of Rick in the trailer in the purple robe, that was a Conrad Thompson loner. <laughs> Well, I don't, know. I don't think there is just one right answer because I'm about to give the wrong one. Uh, I really like Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, and I know this is not everybody's favorite, but I like Barry and Tully. I think that to me is the very best. And I know a lot of people are purists and they think if Ole's not in it, it's not really the horseman. But to me, I really enjoyed Barry as like US champion, Arn and Tully as tag champions, and Rick as the world champion. I think that's great. My second favorite, and this is where I get lots of heat, I loved Sid. When Sid replaced Tully, I thought that was great. As a kid, there's something pretty cool about a six foot 10 guy that looks like he has pumpkins on his shoulders. You're like, man, look at that guy. Well, as a kid, you know, him and, and Barry Windham and Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, that's an imposing group of horsemen. Well, that was easy.